Deep in the south of Poland are the remnants of manually dug shafts from the 1800s, unassuming remnants of an effort which has altered the trajectory of mankind entirely. Under the guidance of prolific chemist Ignacy Łukasiewicz, the world was illuminated by oil lamps powered by the fuel from the world's first oil field here in Bubrica, even before the likes of Rockefeller and the Pennsylvania mines. In modern day, Poles are still adamant in the craft. PGNIG is the most prominent company in the field, providing the country with life-sustaining utilities. Seeing as Poland would not typically be the first country that comes to mind in this field, so I sat down with their CEO to get a deeper understanding. The critical role of the Technic, which is the correct name of our company, is that we are the only bigger provider of gas, natural gas to final users to consumers with the fast growing uh, demand for natural gas in Poland and it is really growing very fast since in 2015 our demand was all altogether roughly 15 billion cubic meters now it's almost 18 after less than four years of, of activities we have a very ambitious program of keeping stable level of production over the next 20 years and it will be 4 billion cubic meters of natural gas domestically and we have good prospects to keep it on this level. After our conversation, I realized that I never really gave consideration as to where my energy is from or how much an effort it is to provide, taking its existence for granted. I headed down to southern Poland to see how it all works, starting with the exploration process at one of the company's most modern drilling pads. So I've just completed a safety briefing on how to behave at a drilling site, and this is really outstanding. These workers are exploring to a depth of four and a half thousand meters to see if they discover something of value. The best part, in my opinion, is that it is exploratory, so although they have a hunch that there could be something under the ground here, they won't know for sure until they dig down and explore. Let's go up there and see how this works. Oh wow, I can see the well. Yes, what we see here is a wellhead and the BOP, it's blowout preventer. So it's kind of security for us. We can close the BOP and close the well. But right now it's about 700 meters. So this is the main platform. Yes, this is the place where our drilling activities happen. And this is the heart of the operation right here. That is the channel to future energy. Yes, this is our well. This pipe is called drilling pipe. On the end of the, this pipe, we have a drilling bit. We crush the rock and allow us to, to drill the well. This man is a driller, so he's operating all the rig from this place. During the drilling, we have a lot of challenges. These pipes are inserted and extracted several times a day even, and sometimes the process can take up to eight hours to change a drill bit. Which is funny because if you look at it, you would just assume that the pipes go down and they just stay there, but it's a really complicated, long process. And I'm also impressed to see how physically intensive this is. Like, look at this guy. Hope I still. This drilling rig is massive. The crew rotates and are provided with on-site catering to keep them fresh and sharp. Amazingly, this entire structure, power plant, and office complex can be disassembled and transported by truck to a new location remarkably fast. When gas is discovered, a permanent mine will be established and the site will become linked to the country's network. I headed over to Yashanka Gas Collection Center to see what the other side of such a connection would entail. At an average of 1,400 meters below my feet, we are in the central distribution point of the Ashanka deposit. It is here that seven lines converge and gas is reduced in pressure 
cleaned before it is sent back out to the network. It's wondrous to think that this unassuming structure provides so much energy for the locals. So a little beginner's guide on how this works. The gas flows in, this is gas line 3K at about 110 atmospheres, which is pretty strong. Then it flows into this separation mechanism where the water falls down into this chamber, eventually flows into the tank behind me. The pressure reduction occurs here. So the atmospheres are reduced to a level that will be safe for consumption, about one and a half atmospheres. This is the point where the gas lines converge and they begin the cleansing process, the drying process. It actually takes a lot of effort to regulate gas in a sense that it won't freeze when it's in the further distribution line um, on the way to your apartment. And as complex as this entire system is, the really astonishing notion that I take away is the fact that these gas deposits date back to the origin the formation of earth and today we use them to sustain our life here Considering the sensitive nature of such a precious resource, storage has been established, ensuring supply continuity. I was granted access to one of the country's most critical facilities. I want you to imagine that it is the dead of winter and the main import supply of gas to Poland has been cut off for three days. This is a scenario that actually happened, yet the people here fared well thanks to what is in this otherwise very ordinary farm field and behind this door. That small yellow pipe is connected to a storage space of 100 million cubic meters of gas. Thanks to this small pipe, the people of Poland are given a buffer. They're given security and energy in times of crisis. The underground storage is not a large open space. It's not possible to visit. On the contrary, it is formed in naturally porous rock, visually similar to a sponge. Every modern convenience that we enjoy was essentially made possible because of the discovery that happened here, a manually dug oil well. This was one of the first places on earth where oil was discovered. This plan from 1879 really gives perspective on how massive the oil fields were. And it's really funny to think that they didn't burn the fuel in cars back then. There weren't cars then actually. The fuel was transported later by horse to people who consumed oil mostly for lamps. When Mr. Wukosiewicz developed the world's fuel industry from his humble desk in Bubrika, I wondered if he imagined how the thousands who staffed PGNIG would follow in his footsteps, preserving the legacy of Polish power. Mm -hmm.